biodiversity. The relevant curriculum strands and skills covered by this content are listed here. This video will take you through some ways to look at the natural heritage or biodiversity of your area, making it interesting and relevant for your students. One of the ways to encourage connection to biodiversity can be to consider the benefits we get from biodiversity and hope that this connection will lead to conservation in the future. So before we get stuck in, let's just make sure that we're clear about what biodiversity is. Biodiversity is a variety of all life on Earth, from the largest whale to the smallest microorganism. It includes plants, wildlife and domestic animals, and even ourselves. And it's important to also consider the relationships within species, between different species, and then also species and the environment. All plants and animals are species, including ourselves. The web of life activity included in the workbook is useful for highlighting the connections between species for students. This can be used to explain the significance of all individual species and the possible risks should species be lost. One convenient way to look at biodiversity anywhere is to consider it in terms of habitats. A habitat is an ecological or environmental area that is inhabited by a particular species of animal, plant or other type of organism. All habitats are unique with their own characteristics, specific species associated and interactions between them. Some different habitats you might find locally include woodlands, grasslands, bogs, hedgerows and water bodies. The Heritage Council's Habitat Document link provided in the workbook will give you a good overview of a variety of Irish habitats. It might be good to look at five plants and five animals that you could find in a local habitat. Are they connected? Do they feed off each other? Do they need each other for reproduction? Within each habitat, there will often be species that are specifically adapted to living in these conditions, sometimes even in the harshest of conditions. One example of this would be the carnivorous plants, such as sundew or butterworth, which can grow in areas of low soil nutrition due to the fact that they can catch and absorb nutrients from insects. It would definitely be worth trying to find some of these specialist plants or adapted plants in your area. They're sure to be the ones that the students will remember. You could also look at where the plants came from originally and check whether they are native or non-native. There are some issues around the spread of non-native species in some areas of Ireland. They are said to have become invasive, crowding out the areas where native plants or animals would have been living. This could provide an interesting area of study locally. There is information on invasive and native and non-native species on the Biodiversity Centre's website listed in the workbook. Once you've established whether your local species are native or non-native, you could then try and track where the seeds may have travelled from or how the animals arrived here originally. The burren in particular has some interesting stories to uncover in terms of the origins of some of its plants and animal species, be it the mountain avens, which is thought to have arrived via seeds transported during the Ice Age, or the legless lizard, the slow worm, which is thought to have been released in the 1950s and which is now very much at home in the burren. A lovely classroom activity can be to put up a bird table or feeder and try and identify the common birds that will visit. You can then include the birds you've seen in a habitat web or chain for your school grounds. As well as the cultural and recreational benefits provided by our natural heritage, there is also huge economic value, which may be one way to underline the importance of biodiversity in our lives. The goods and services provided by biodiversity are estimated to contribute a minimum of 2.6 billion euro per annum to the Irish economy, it being the foundation upon which our agriculture, forestry, fisheries and tourism sector depend. Do any of your students' parents work in food or environment related industries? Healthy habitats and ecosystems are vital for sustaining societal services such as crop pollination, carbon storage and climate regulation, the purification of water and air and flood control. There are also many medicinal benefits which have traditionally been derived from plants. Some common wildflowers which you may come across include ladies' bedstraw. Well-known uses include curdling milk to make cheese or using part of the flower to produce red dye. When dried it has the fragrance of hay and was used as bedstraw. Eyebrights are thought to cure infections of the eye. Self-heal also known as carpenter's herb, reflects the herb's alleged power to join together and make whole and sound all wounds both inward and outward. 
burnet rose hips were once made into conserves and syrups. They are high in vitamin C and were used to treat scurvy, fevers, stomach ailments and coughs. A growing area of interest and study around biodiversity is biomimicry, which involves looking at what we can learn from the systems that plants and animals have developed over thousands of years. It's all linked to seeing humans as part of biodiversity. We have the same needs as other creatures, the difference between people and nature being not really what we're trying to achieve, but how we do it. After 3.8 billion years, life has arrived at well-developed solutions for the many challenges we face. Many human processes involve heat, beat and treat, requiring high inputs and leaving high waste. Biomimicry isn't an entirely new idea. Leonardo da Vinci, the Wright brothers, Alexander Graham Bell, indigenous cultures have all taken ideas from nature. It's more an emerging discipline of an ancient practice, whether it's looking at how birds fly so efficiently to design aircraft, or using the mechanisms of cleavers to make materials that stick together. There are plenty of easy examples you can come up with where we could learn from nature. Investigations of biomimicry and some of the examples which are available online could prompt students to look differently at nature and perhaps inspire the next generation of engineers or inventors. The long-term hope is that through education and increased awareness of the importance of biodiversity for all, that students may one day be motivated to get involved in conservation locally. It could be a really nice ongoing project for a school to adopt an area locally which they can look after and improve for biodiversity over time. It could be a bird table, a litter pick, a waste reduction policy, or maybe a wildflower area. When studying biodiversity, it's really important not to be afraid of not knowing the names. It's important to just get out there and look at what's living in your area. You can find the names together or change the way you're looking at things. Instead of needing a name, look at the details, the colour, size, interaction with other species or the habitat that the species is living in. Some inquiry board questions to get you started. What is the main habitat in your area? What chain or web exists in this habitat? Is there anything strange or exciting you have discovered about the biodiversity in your area? And what can be done to help preserve your local biodiversity?